Jimmy.com. Hi guys, appreciate you sticking with me. Well, we're gonna wrap up our Cusco interlude here in the big city of Cusco, Peru, before uh, heading back for our second plunge into the Amazon rainforest. Just had one more little adventure I wanted to uh, get to during my Cusco interlude. On Tuesday afternoon, this is probably the last Tuesday of June of 2009, on Tuesday afternoon, 12 hours before I was supposed to catch the bus back down the mountain for my second plunge into the Peruvian Amazon, my gringo tour guide, Joaquin Rivers, sounding a lot like a Peruvian, emailed to tell me we would now be leaving on Friday. He promised the consolation prize of this newest two-day delay was that I would be able to attend an energy cleansing on Thursday night led by a shaman, Shaw woman, named Lulu Morningstar. That's what we'll just call her, Lulu Morningstar. On Thursday afternoon, I sent out my preface to Peruvian Plunge, which included, as you may recall, the following sentence. I'm sure I'll have plenty to say about San Pedro, peyote essentially, and ayahuasca just as soon as I can find a shaman in this damn country who is not a money-hungry, tourist-gouging huckster, usually working for a honky if he or she is not a honky himself or herself. Six hours after sending that message out into cyberspace, I found myself, along with a dozen other honky tourists on the spiritual path, sitting on a cushion on the floor of the South American Explorers Club, mellowing out under the loving spiritual guidance of Morningstar. After we had bathed our faces in flower-scented water, smoked our bodies in cedar, chanted, ahmed, cleansed our energies, meditated, sealed ourselves in Gaia's loving light, and chewed a few coca leaves, we were treated to Morning Star's hour-long sales pitch. By and large, this sales pitch consisted consisted of her giving us the following condensed version of her life on the spiritual path between real estate deals. I'll let Morningstar speak for herself from her website to give you a much better glimpse of who I was dealing with. Bracketed comments, compliments of yours truly. It goes without saying. <clears throat> All right. Lulu Morningstar is a Swiss-born American from Saratoga, California, who in 1998 decided to let go of all her material possessions and take flight into the unknown. Following a strong calling of her heart, she set out on a spiritual journey to Peru with the clear intent to learn more about Peruvian shamanism Hmm, where have I heard that story before? It was divine intervention, and probably about $85, that led Morningstar to some life-changing encounters with various local shamans. Those experiences revealed an ancient connection to this part of the world and its wisdom and became the catalyst for Lulu's decision to live and work in Cusco, the naval and spiritual center of the world. That's N-A-V-E-L, the, the belly button and spiritual center of the world. Following an initial four years residing in Cusco and giving birth to the Casa de la Serenidad, the House of Serenity, that must have hurt like hell giving birth to a two-story brick house. In the Andes, divine guidance, 
not to mention a settlement check from her ex-husband in California, <clears throat> presented Morningstar with an opportunity to fulfill a lifelong dream to live by the ocean. Her move to Moncara at the north coast of Peru turned out to be another important stepping stone on her spiritual path to deepen her knowledge and expertise by integrating the powerful feminine energies of Mama Cocha, Mother Water, into her work. In spite of the tranquility and serenity, not to mention the growing number of drunks and coke whores infiltrating the town, of her oceanfront retreat, her love and strong ties to Pachamama, Mother Earth, and the Andean culture remained consistent. After three years living at the ocean shore, she could not withstand the magnetic power of the Andes any longer and returned to her beloved Cusco. With a fat check in her pocket from the sale of her oceanfront house. <clears throat> in 2006, she acquired some land in the exclusive gated community and power vortex of Santa Maria, Cusco, away from the hustle and bustle of the downtown area to create a pure oasis of light, a safe haven for introspection, transformation, and higher consciousness, not to mention regular garbage pickup. Lulu Morningstar is a devoted light worker, shaman, and visionary with a diverse cultural and educational background, being true to her life's mission as a beacon of light. She is assisting her clients with a unique concept in the accelerated awakening of the crucial codes of light and the mother goddess within, the love principle, the feminine energy that is man and woman alike. These higher levels of consciousness are needed by the folks who can afford them, which excludes 99% of the population of Peru, for the transformation and ascension of humanity and the planet Earth. The light and healing work modalities offered include Peruvian and Native American shamanism with various cleansing rituals, rituals and ceremonies, including a private shower with Morningstar, the use of the master teachers of ayahuasca in San Pedro, see separate page on her website, teachings about the Andean cosmology guided meditation, transpersonal work with Reiki, regression, inner child work, crystals, coca leaf, and power animal readings, intuitive counseling, spiritual guidance, and love. Now, if that is not a bliss ninny resume from the fourth dimension, or is it the fifth dimension? I don't know what is. So we're going to leave her website, go back to the story. <clears throat> if you dig a little deeper into Morningstar's lavender inked website, you will find that you too can tap into the fourth dimension, or is it the fifth dimension for anywhere from $350 for a one-day San Pedro vision, six bucks at the Cusco market, or shoot the moon for the full five-day spiritual blowout for $1,800 for two people, all meals included. If you don't want to carry that kind of cash around you, with you in a Peruvian cab, you can always just PayPal her the money over the internet. Or if you wish, 
you can deposit the dough directly into our bank account at the Saratoga, California branch of the world's biggest planet-eating bank, Bank of America, where I bank. For anybody who has never been to Saratoga, California, let's just say they don't have a problem with panhandlers bumming spare change if you get my drift. <clears throat> a cursory reading of my smart-ass comments above might lead you to believe incorrectly that I am accusing Morningstar of being a charlatan or a sham. In fact, Nothing could be further from the truth. As I sat there on that cushion on the floor, awash in flower-scented water and Gaia's loving light, I knew I was in the presence of someone who truly believed from the bottom of her heart and soul that Pachamama, Mother Love, was the energy that powered this planet. Her love of and service to Gaia was clearly heartfelt and genuine, and the passion in her voice and the light in her spirit brought me to tears several times that night. The woman was clearly a healer, unlike all the scamming real Peruvian shamans within a six-block radius. I was so impressed with her, in fact, that I felt Spirit had set up this meeting with her by bringing me back to Cusco and then delaying my departure back to the jungle. As virtual proof of this, I had received one hour before first laying eyes on Morningstar yet another email from Joaquin Rivers saying that we would now be going to the jungle on Saturday, he promised. What a surprise. Obviously, this was the universe's way of giving me the opportunity to go check out the power vortex and oasis of light of Casa de Serenidad. It was a chapter right out of Castaneda, or the Celestine Prophecy. Bright and early next morning, I hopped in a cab with two other Morning Star Disciple newbies for the 20-minute ride into the hills behind Cusco. As we left the dirty, crowded sidewalks, the staggering, vacant-eyed drunks, the starving street kids and stray dogs of downtown Cusco behind us, and began climbing into the verdant, eucalyptus-cloaked hills, I felt like I was heading to, well... Saratoga, California. This feeling grew stronger when we encountered a locked wrought iron gate blocking the road. An armed security guard emerged from the gatehouse, checked us all out suspiciously, and copied down the cabbie's name and license number. We climbed higher and higher through the expensive executive homes. Not a stray dog, starving street child, or staggering drunk in sight to spoil our spiritual bliss until we arrived at the second to last palatial home from the end of the cul-de-sac. You know that last house has to really burn Morningstar, who has a long string of real estate investments behind her, as I do. It wasn't exactly the dirt floor thatched roof hut in the Amazon jungle I had envisioned for my first ayahuasca session with a real shaman. But hey, spirit works in mysterious ways, so I really was determined to remain open-minded. I swear I was! We disembarked from the cab and rang the doorbell of Casa de Serenidad. We were ushered inside by the friendly maid and led into the private walled-in courtyard behind the big two-story house. It was well-appointed, with a manicured lawn, rose bushes, hummingbird feeders, crystals, the usual trappings of your usual run-of-the-mill spiritual retreat center. Sitting majestically in a comfortable wicker lawn chair in the morning sun, sipping a cup of coca leaf tea and stroking her beloved Pekingese. 
sat the regal morning star in all her turquoise kimono finery. Behind Morning Star, at the rear of the courtyard, was yet another two-story house, the guest house where spiritual seekers live when they're on multi-day retreats to the Oasis of Light. As the maid was busy fetching us all coca tea and apple strudel, Morning Star herself led us on a tour of the spotless and well-appointed four-bedroom, two-bath house that approximately 90% of Peru's population would have sold their children into slavery to acquire. Mind you, the place didn't look like this when I bought it, Morning Star pointed out. The sun porch wasn't even here. I actually lived in this house for a year. It was terrible. I thought, what can I do with such a place? Tear it down? What she did instead was build the front house, the other two-story, four-bedroom, two-bath, perhaps 3,000 square foot new home, which she finished a year ago, allowing her to escape the confines of that miserable little back, back house that she has since remodeled into the guest house. I told myself, if I ever build my own house, it needs to have two things, a jacuzzi and an electric garage door opener announced the Gaia-worshipping shaman with a broad, proud smile and not the least trace of irony. It's great you can have these things, responded one of my fellow spiritual seekers, again without the slightest trace of irony. Spirit winked at me over my left shoulder and shushed my rising ham-bone psychic puke with witty retorts with a finger over her lips. We returned to the sunny courtyard where the maid served us our coca tea and apple strudel. As we sat there chatting softly, the ritzy neighborhood garbage truck roared up and down the suburban streets, blaring its horn. It seemed like a jet plane took off from the Cusco airport just below the safe haven for introspection every five minutes. As we sipped our tea, Morning Star, no doubt perceiving with her fourth dimensional radar, or is that fifth dimensional radar, that she had already lost my business somewhere between her jacuzzi tub and electric garage door opener, Tries, tried to close the deal with the other couple. She asked them when they would like to take their first San Pedro vision journey. Just as long as it's not on a garbage pickup day, quipped the male half of the couple, eliciting a withering glance from his wife. He mentioned that we should probably be returning to Cusco. Morningstar whipped out her cell phone from somewhere inside her kimono and punched in the rapid dial number of her own private cabbie, who she uses when she doesn't feel like taking her own car. Would you like to visit the sweat lodge and the temple while we are waiting for your cab? Our hostess invited us as she tucked her cell phone back into her kimono. She led us up a trail behind the guest house. We stopped briefly at the little round sweat lodge, then continued on to the temple where she conducts her ayahuasca healing sessions. We removed our shoes like good little temple visitors and stepped inside the carefully designed circular, of course, little round building. There's probably a picture of it on her website. I would like to give you a detailed description of Morningstar's temple and tell you what she had to say about its Mother Earth blessed loving energy and all that bliss ninny blather, but quite frankly, all that is now a blur. My unbelieving eyes were glued to the very center of the healing circle, there forever halted in its tracks in all its sad, ragged glory, laid the macabre, faded, roach-eaten 
eaten pelt of a dead mountain lion. This defeated warrior was so mangled and amateurish, amateurishly tanned that had it not been for the long tail draped out behind the corpse, I may have mistaken it for a deerskin rug. Don't quote me on this, but I think think the Gaia worshiping owner of this testament to senseless death and celebration of planet eating was saying something about the spirit of this once beautiful murdered child of Gaia representing integrity. It was all I could do to keep from falling to my knees and wrapping my arms around this powerless power animal in a loving embrace and yowling like a wounded panther into the cavern of the haunted healing temple. Forgive her mother, for she knows not what she does. And that will wrap up our Cusco interlude and bring us into plunge number two as Peruvian Plunge continues coming up soon. Bye, guys.